Yes. In five. No, it's already. Well, like, we're already here. Not, he said like, he pulled the Freddy. He said in five. I four. know exactly doing that. Three. Even know, are we allowed to even two. say the title of the show, or are they gonna like copyright my ass? I Carly. Okay. He. Okay. So if I get copyrighted, it's your fault. Anyway, yeah. I Carly from like Freddie from I Carly. If anybody knows, you know. In five, Random four, dancing. three. Um, okay, so this is take two because somebody didn't know their camera was on the entire time. I'm not gonna say who it was, Rowan. Fuck you. Fuck you. So that's something I will say real quick. That you reminded me. My me and my boys, we are so funny. Me, my me and my supervisor I says I because every time we see each other, the first thing we do is flip each other off. Mind you, that's most of like the people in my department. But it's just so funny. I love like our inappropriate relationships, oh, not yeah. in a inappropriate way like that. But like just the vulgar like we curse at each other all the time. I have one coworker who the, when I walk in, I look at him and I just go "fuck you" and I walk out. And he like if I don't say that to him, he'll be like, "Hey, Kevin, fuck you and fuck you for not saying fuck." Like it's just our little pitter patter. A pitter patter. A little pit of pad. We gotta get the aggression out, you know, so we just be pieces of shits to each other because we can't beat everybody else. Anyway. Anyway. Well when I was in school that meant that you liked the other person. Yeah, no, yeah, that yeah, that's school though. But that's like but that's different. That's like flirting saying it. No, this is like me and like it's like we brothers, you know. We just like you just Oh, like, it's like saying fuck you and then you're like, mm, when? No, yeah, no that no, yeah, no, we don't do that. That's gay. That's gay. <laughs> Mind you, I'm gay, so that's okay. I can say that. I can say that. That's good. And I'm gay. Happy Pride, by the way, to all my peoples out there. Yes, I'm month we're going to. Anyway, so, peoples, we are here to talk about devotions, offerings, libations, supplications, stuff like that. All of that. All of that. Um, and first thing I gotta say is that we are not dictionaries. We're not going to give you the definitions of what these words are. We are going to tell you what they mean to us and how we approach them and how we use these terms. What it means to us doesn't mean it, um, means that way for you guys or for anyone else out there. You know, we're all different, you know, so just putting that out there. This is what this means to us in our practices. But anyway, Rowan, I got a question for you. Yeah. What is devotion? Okay. So, devotion, uh, I think, to me, has two different terms. Uh, It's a term that gets split into two different kinds of, like, what am I trying to say? It's a one term that has multiple meanings to me so there's devotion behind an offering it's like the feeling that you have the love the the honor behind why you're giving it and then devotion also means like um your faith or your dedication dedication to a deity Mm -hmm. so devotions and offerings are the same and not the same at the same time. Right. To me, um, de- to me, devotion is more of like an active term, like an action word. Um, some people may say um, spending time, like for example, for Hecate, spending time donating. Oh, happy dark moon, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that out there. Happy Dark Moon. I forgot. Happy Dive Non, Death Non. Happy Dive Non. Yeah. Um, some people may say that as an offering, they donate their time to an animal shelter for Hecate or like a homeless shelter for Hecate. But to me, I don't see that as much of an offering. I see that much more of like a devotion. Right. To me, right. to me, no, I agree with you. That's literally me, what I was offering, just thinking. Yeah. Yeah, to me, offering is something physical that you give the deity. Like mm. incense, food, water, milk. Right. Sweet. So that kind of thing. Oh, excuse me. Right. 
and then devotion is more of a time thing. Or right. um, I feel like prayer can fall into the devotion aspect. But then also devotion is the love behind an offering as well. Right. Right. I love that. I love that. And I think a lot of people get stuck on the having to give a lot or having to give the best of the best when really offerings or what you should be able or, or what you should give with the means that you have to get them. So say, for example, um, that the only thing that I can afford to give is an apple. Right. I paid all my bills. Right. I have nothing left. I go outside. I find an apple on a tree or I have a leftover apple that I bought for like 50 cents somewhere, which I don't think you can buy an apple. I was not in this economy. I know. <laughs> that is literally all I have. I don't have a crumb of milk. I don't have a flower that's growing outside. All I have is an apple. Right. And who's to say that I might be starving? That's so why I cut the apple in half and I give right. half to Hecate and half I eat because I'm starving. Right. Hecate sees the sacrifice and the devotion, the love behind that. Mm-hmm. And then l- little do you know that half an apple, she multiplies into a whole tree. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But then I also believe that if you're living high on the hog. If you're rolling in that dough. If you're eating steak and shrimp and, and lobster caviar. Every, and caviar. Ooh, I don't know you caviar. I actually and, cannot stand the taste of caviar. But that escargot, give it to me any day. That's gross. And then you go oh. to the, the club and you drop a band. So you go to the club and drop in two, three, four thousand dollars in the club, right. drinking, dancing, singing. And then you come home and then you give Hecate a half a dollar. Bar. Right. A half a Hershey bar. I find a problem with that. There's going to be a problem. I think, I think, right, <laughs> right. So it's like we said um the other night, it's, you know, give what you get. You know what I'm saying? Give what you get. You know, yeah. share the what you know, share it just like you would with your family, or with your friends. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You do with your with your spirits. Oh, yes, you do. And say, for example, you have you live in a very humble home. You live in, say, for example, a two bedroom trailer. You live in a um, auto, not an auto home. What's the term? An RV. You live in just a, a very small house. You don't have to dedicate a whole freaking room to your deities. Right. Like, you only live in a two-bedroom apartment. Okay, okay. You ain't got to give them a whole fucking, you know, a, a, like he said, like a goddamn whole room to them. Yeah, find yeah. you a nice little corner or a nice little, get you right. one of them cheap um, uh, bookshelves off of Amazon and put it up. Literally. That can, be, that can be your altar or, literally, and, and you don't have to have an altar either, but literally screw in a shelf in the wall and boom you got it yeah um, i got freaking shelves filled with shines but on the other hand if you're living in a three-story a man mansion with 10 bedrooms and you got a right. jacuzzi and right you best you best give that whoever you work with you best give them a fucking wing you heard a wing a in that motherfucker because you got it see I love my spirit. <laughs> That's why I was like, because you got there because of them. Don't play. Yeah, you I'll give see. them what you give them what you get. That's what I'm saying. You give them what you get. I see. I love like I, I, some of the things you brought up, like um, like with the term of the sacrifice, right? Now, if you were, if you do want to boil it down to like the word meat, like the word sacrifice means to make something sacred, right? That's an offering. Literally is when you, like you take something out of the ordinary, you make it sacred, and you make it again like you gift it to a deity or a spirit. You take something you know what ordinary I mean? and make it extraordinary. Exactly. Wow, that was lame. But exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, for real. Um, <laughs> you and again, in, even sacri- and again, sacrifices. The best one of sacrifices are the ones that hurt a little bit inside. You know, when you give it to them. You know what I mean? Like, like what? Like I was telling Rowan, one of my offerings to Hecate tonight was some what's on my mandrake root. Now I love my mandrake root. I, unless I'm using it, I don't want to give it to nobody. But you know, that's my mama. She's gonna have the ranch root. 
All right, that's right. That that's true. Sacrifice, sacrifice, honor, and exactly, and it's not gonna. It's, what is it gonna kill me? I can get more magic root anytime. You know, what I'm saying? but you you have what you give, what you get. You give what you get. So, but yeah, no offerings, sacrifices, stuff like, like how that. I sent you some of my favorite incense, and I'm very stingy with it. Exactly. See, he offering it to me, and I'm about to be again. You're about to get a plethora of fucking incenses, cause I don't know. Okay, somebody out there listening, I hope someone can relate to me, cause he says when he makes his loose incense, they don't really smell that good, and I'm over here like, no, no, no. I per, I'm, depending on the working, but nine times out of ten, cause I'm not trying to do anything horrible. <laughs> um, but nine times out of ten, my shit be smelling good as fuck. I make sure it smells good as fuck, because that's the point. That's the fragrance. That's the incense. So you don't want that to smell bad. I'm going to send you my incenses, and you're going to tell me if they smell good or if they smell bad. And if they if you say they smell bad, then I'm going to chop your nose off and make you walk around and you're looking like goddamn Voldemort. I don't fuck, because I know my shit smells good. Hey, my ex was Voldemort. Oh, okay. And, all right. Um, so- and, and so offering... Again, that and they don't have to be like. Again, they don't have to be because if if you only got some bread on the fucking table, give them it's some like, bread. You know that reminds me of that um, video of Mariah Carey in the club. I'm gonna do the best with it. Wait, no, how she goes? She goes. I'm gonna do the best I have with what I got. Okay, I don't. I did not see that video, but exactly. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to get it for you. But, she's in the um, club and she's drunk, mm-hmm. and she's like, "I'm gonna do what I got with the do the best I have with what I got." Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that's the mentality to have when it comes to offerings. Now, with that being said, definitely maybe like again, if you're living, you know, uh you know, a semi like comfortable life where like, you know, maybe you can save up on a special day or whatever to splurge a little. That's always a great thing. <laughs> Definitely, you know, like, you know, because you know for me, you know, there's always offerings given to I could say, but on her death non is like here's your offerings for real, for real. Like here you go, here's your meal, what which you need, mama. Um but and that's something to uh, I'll slide into the devotion real quick, and I will say that you know when it comes to devotion, I do believe that that is again like devoting oneself to like a spirit or to an uh, a deity or something. Now, depending on personal belief and perspective, you can devote yourself to ment- many entities or just like some people will say like you know. If you devote yourself to two entities, you know, be it gods, for example, then that's not true devotion. Because true devotion is only being devoted to one single entity. That's that way for some people. For me personally, I am devoted to a couple of things. I work with two um, Catholic angels that I'm devoted to. I, I'm devoted to my to my ancestors and the ancestors. I'm devoted to my god and goddess. Um. Yeah, no, yeah, so that personally for me, that, like, you don't have to, you know, but devotion, and then this is where, again, personally, but I feel maybe for the majority, devotion is very, A, personable, and B, um, very serious, right, like, when you get a devotion, okay, it's kind of like, um, some people, who begin to devote themselves to certain entities like to go through what they call an initiation, right? Mm -hmm. For example, the biggest initiation known to all is the, um, the church's baptism, right? That is an initiation. And that is like a, a a ceremony basically where you are initiated into the religion and you devote yourself to said deities or said spirits. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, again, devote. Now, not everybody goes through initiation. You don't have to go through initiation depending on the entity you are working with. Some you do, some you don't. Um, but it's e- either with or without, it's still a very serious act. Very, what well, I would even maybe go and say, like blood binding, like oath type of thing. Like, it's very serious. You don't want to just devote yourself to just anybody. I feel like you do want to have like a certain relationship and you want to make it like lifelong type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't think 
people who devote themselves think like i'm not going to work with you in the future you know what i'm saying right i think when you devote yourself it's like okay no this is a lifelong path i'm willing to like join you with like i want you to join with me i want to join with you on this and we walk it together you know what i'm saying right. for some people you know you wait a few let's say you work with um uh odin right i don't know why i just thought of odin but somebody out here listening and thinking of odin so you work with odin you know maybe you want to work with odin for a few years or so before you devote yourself maybe not maybe there's something in you that's like yes you know but you again you want to make sure it's like getting that tattoo you know you don't want to just get something stupid and then you're going to regret it like five years down the line <laughs> right that's yeah that's my example devotions are like tattoos <laughs> don't just really nearly be out here devoting yourself to things i feel like when it comes to the idea of devotions deities and stuff you can kind of think of it as like um, like a marriage right I w- I oh say- my god do you know how many people out here are like i'm married to this deity yes I'm- but we're not going to go into that no yeah i was about to say national not- television <laughs> <laughs> but um i'm not i'm talking more like you can think of it as like a no, yeah. marriage um which of course in marriage there is divorce so I do believe if you're devoted to a deity and something oh, yeah. happens on your on your path oh, yeah. and you change, oh, yeah. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, with that being said, I'm not, let, let me not try to scare anybody because absolutely you can undevote yourself <laughs> by, by all means. There's rituals, there's ways to do that. You don't even have to do that. But no, there is absolutely, you do not, yeah, no. If you're working with someone for X amount of time and you're not feeling it anymore, you have more than the right to back out. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know if there's someone, if there's an entity out there that might take backlash on that. I don't know who that is and shit, maybe you should have done your research. <laughs> mm-hmm. But no, <laughs> any any true divine entity is not going to do that. <laughs> and absolutely. Yes, just like he said, it's a ceremony that binds you to said entity, but just like marriage, you have your divorce in some cases where absolutely. Like, for example, when I devoted myself to my, all the entities that I am devoted to, I also, in the same ritual, undevoted myself because I was baptized under the Catholic religion. Mm-hmm. And I don't have anything against the Catholic religion. It's just not my, it, wasn't, it just wasn't for me. You know what I mean? I have full, I actually love the Catholic religion. I work Catholicism, folk magic. I love the, um, the angels, the saints, the deities. Oh, my God. Absolutely. But it's just not like that's some, like that is the relationship I would have but uh, like with Anubis or with um, I really don't know who else I would actually work with um, or like Nyx. You know what I mean? Like someone like like I would work with you. Absolutely. But I'm not going to devote myself to you. Right. And that's something that, you know, you can also do again, depending on your entity that you're devoted to. They some might have their own opinions. Um, I know there's a, maybe a couple that I probably definitely cannot call on. <laughs> um, not even as a joke. <laughs> but no, some, yeah, no, you can absolutely, um, even if you're devoted, just don't let that steer you from thinking you can't work with other entities. Now, this actually, I was just talking to Rowan about how, like, I actually do have the problem where, like, I would like to work with other entities, but, or like other deities. But every time I, like, have something to do that I would uh, invoke a deity for, I'm always like, well, the, de- the, the, the gods I'm devoted to can do this. And mm-hmm. can do this, trust me, with no problem. And with exactly what I, like, like you know what I mean? It's like, that's, like, my thing. Like, it's like, I, I don't know. That's what I struggle with, where it's like, yeah, no, I so can. But I go to my deities, like, I have them for a reason. And that's just my perspective. Again, that doesn't have to be everybody's perspective. I know somebody out here who could be devoted to Loki, but is calling on um, Frigg, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um... And devotion also isn't just towards deities. That's why I keep using the word entities or spirits, because you can devote yourself to any type of spirit or entity. Now, what would you consider the difference between devotion and veneration? Um, okay. 
I would view more veneration as showing respect. So, for example, um, I go, okay, so I go to um, my friend, my friend Brooke's house, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, hey, girl, I know you're listening. Yeah, okay. Hey, I go to my girl's house and she works um, with a guy Loki and I, I pay, I pay my respects. I, I, you know, if I got an offering, I'll give an offering, you know, stuff like a little, a little speaking, a little communication. Cause every time I put my hands on that altar, I'm literally, it literally vibrates my hand. It's so insane. Um, so I feel pain, uh, like veneration is like paying respect, like to a lot of people, you know, because I'm devoted to my ancestors and the ancestors for um, my own reasons. Not everybody who works with that, with, with the ancestors, um, would devote, like, you know, not everybody devotes themselves. You know what I mean? But if you work with your ancestors, you have a shrine to your ancestors, you pay offerings and refuge and stuff like that. Um, no, I definitely, like, that. Like that's uh, veneration, you know, paying respect, you know, even giving offerings to... Like, you know, honoring said, you know, whatever. But again, it's just without the devotion. Or, uh, yeah, also, or to me, I see veneration as like um, striving. You can see this a lot with saints. Using the person as an ideal idea to strive towards as like um, a role model. Right. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. That's usually um, what a lot of people in the Catholic religion do with saints is they venerate them, use them as like an archetype archetype or a role to follow, to be like them. Right. Right. No, I see that. It's, you know, again, like to me, it's like, you know, because I feel like, you know, we do that with those we even devote ourselves to. Mm-hmm. But again, it's like, it's like all the devotional acts without devote without the actual devotion. Oh yeah. my god! The fuck I that? thought I I thought I almost was gonna witness an accident. People do not know how to drive. Let me tell you something. People do not know how to drive, and it's so scary. It is so scary. Anyway, I'm sorry for everyone who heard that. But okay. um, yeah. So that's like my opinion on it. I thought you were being possessed. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, so that, was, that would be my answer. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, let me see. I have questions written down. Oh my god, do you? I I was gonna see if I should get questions and then I totally forgot. I actually didn't even realize tonight was Hecate's depth on until I was at work and I realized it was Wednesday and I'm like, oh wait a minute. Cause I, cause I checked prior and I kept telling myself Wednesday, Wednesday. And then I was like, it's Wednesday? Wait a minute. I have stuff to do tonight. I have a ritual to perform and I have a cauldron chat to film. Do you think that a god really cares what you do or give or say as long as there's love behind it? Okay. Perfect. And I remember we were talking about this before and I was like, I really want to talk about this tonight. Um, so this goal this falls under the offering category, right? Yeah. Um let me put my so excuse me, I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna get my tray and my legal marijuana. Let's not forget it's legal. Um so oh we don't need this light on if it's not here. Hi Hecate. Um so these offerings, right? They are now. Let me try to see if I can actually find the right words that I'm trying to explain. I feel like with offerings, um, many people amp like okay. 
there's an energy and a feeling that goes with giving offerings. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, you want to offer for you know a couple of reasons, but basic reason is just to you know, is to give. You know what I mean? That's mm. what an, you know is to give, and that alone ha- carries such an energy that is so again like just giving and loving that you know what I'm saying. When you amplify, like again, because you take an ordinary object, be it whatever it is, and then you create it into, again, like an, you, you know, you enchant it, you know, you pray over it, you, you know, literally just say, hey, Hecate, this is for you, whatever, you know, for me, um, I like to, you know, make symbols um, that, am- that I feel amplify um, Hecate's energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and is and the symbols are just amplified by Hec- by Hecate's energy, and you know, and I put that into the offering along with a little saying, like you know, just hey, girl, this is for you, and you only like come get this, or like mm-hmm. this is for you and your peoples. You know, you got a whole fucking gang with you when you walk. So how about that? Here's a little something to share with that, a little treaty for them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but so, but now this is the thing. Right. When we're not when you give them a glass of wine, they're not going to drink a glass of fucking wine. You know, that physical glass of wine isn't going to be drank. You know, you can. I bet I, I bet that shit will get empty quick. And I know a lot of people would be like evaporation. But I'm like, yo, I don't know. I should evaporate a little too quickly. But hey, <laughs> but, but shit, you wanna you wanna you wanna fuck with me with your science bullshit? Hey, don't forget, science is magic. It's not how you burn. But anyway, so what? Um, so yeah, so what? You, what they get on their side is that glass of wine, energy, and and essence. You know what I mean? Along with the energy of the love and the giving that you're doing and that you're sharing. You know what I'm saying? You get they get the essence of whatever you're giving them and then more with that offering that comes from you. And mind you, and yes, they and again, yes, they they drink that wine and yes, and you and to be honest, the way you can even bless it and enchant it, it can be like a never-ending glass of wine for a while. You know what I'm saying? Where like, you know, they can Everybody can pick up that, like from one glass, everybody in the other world can get, like, a, like can share, you know what I'm saying? That glass mm-hmm. of wine. Because it's that energy, it's the essence. That's what you're doing. That's what you're giving. You're not actually giving them a fucking apple. They're not, you know, nobody here, you're not going to wake up the next day and see a, bi- a bite taken out of it. You know what I'm saying? Or it, like, just mm-hmm. be disappeared. Nobody's going to leave you a thank you note. You know what I mean? Because, I don't know, maybe you will wake up and see a bit and a bite out of that. You know, I don't know. But, again, nobody's going to take it and then write you a thank you No, You're not going to see that. Um, no, but, again, it's, again, on the other side, it's the essence. It's the energy. Right. It's like you said, the essence is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now... Would you say that some have more than others? I so this I would say that the essence of something, yeah, the, like every everything has its own essence and its own energy and its own frequency. You know what I'm saying? That it vibrates on, just like mm-hmm. how you know all these herbs that witches work with. They're all different. You know what I mean? Some. Like, some work, like, they all work amazingly, but some work better for certain things than others. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like if you give them a watermelon, there's going to be more energy behind that than if you give them an apple. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, again, I mean, that's just, again, like, that kind of falls under, like, you know, you give more when when you can. But at the end of the day... They're not looking to get the most. You want to give them the most because you just want to. You know what I mean? They don't ask for that. They don't. They don't care. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Either they don't care either way whether they get the fucking apple or a watermelon. You know what I mean? But again, I do think that there's you know just whatever you're working with is the like you know like the difference the difference in energy. 
mm-hmm. some things are like more abundant than others, you know? Right. Gotcha. Especially how much preparation you put behind it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I, it's like in the Bible, um, the faith, the faith the size of a mustard seed. Yes. Can move mountains. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I will say, I that's why I do love uh, offering like a bowl of fruit when I can because the energy in that I just feel is so awesome. Mm-hmm. Something about fruit. It's the yeah. fruit's energy. Everybody know, like you. Everybody knows there's something different about fruit. You know, whether you mm-hmm. actually like it or not, like that's different. But you know, maybe that's the difference. Maybe you don't like it. You know what I mean? But always something about that damn fruit is just hits different. I mean. They say that the world started with a fruit. There we go. Freaking fruit is in almost every myth. You know, like the apple of the sword. The, Adam and um, Eve's apple. Adam and Eve, Eve's apple, yeah. Yeah. There was also the golden apple in some Greek myth, I forget. I think that was the apple of the sword. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, mm-hmm. I can't think of anything else. What about you? Um, uh, let me think. Let me think. I mean, I guess that's really all. You know, offerings is all about you know. Like, again, even if it's just that cigarette that you have, like that extra smoke in your pack. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Even if it's just the puff. L- literally. Literally, even if it's just the puff, you hear that right there with that. That's a fact. Um, and again, when it comes to the devotion, so no, I got a few questions when it comes to the devotion. So, <clears throat> how would okay, how would you like not like what you do in your practice, but like how would you like to, to give like an example to someone? How would you tell them how to devote them? Like, how would someone devote themselves to another? entity well you could be like kevin and do a whole ritual underneath the solar eclipse (laughs) if he's casting the vampire curse (laughs) hey that is literally the best time to do any fucking devotion i'm just saying as the fucking moon passes from one end of the sun to the other are you kidding me literally the world changes in that moment Mm mm-hmm um, oh my god can i now it, okay while you think about that let me tell you guys what the ancient egyptians believed about the solar eclipse okay so the ancient egyptians believed that w- there was this okay for those who know way more about egyptian mythology than me i'm so sorry for what i'm about to how i'm about to explain this but the way i'm going to explain this is there's a giant snake that's wrapped around the earth that's always trying to swallow the sun right And every day, you know, the snake fails and the sun comes up and rises again. Except for when it comes to the solar eclipse, when the snake consumes the sun and winds and evil reigns and all like doom and destruction is like going on and evil and chaos is happening throughout the world. And a lot of times... A, I feel like that's a perfect time to be, you know, working in certain other types of magics. Um, but they also believe they had, a, I think, a ritual for the solar eclipse for mummification, if I'm not mistaken. There's that. Cool. Little tidbit. Little tidbit about the solar eclipse. A lot of, like, good myths are out there. But that's, like, one of, like, the first darker myths I've heard. Like, I've heard of a few dark myths. But that one, I don't I like that one. Or you can be, like, some cultures and be afraid that your whole city is going to be destroyed so you sacrifice a virgin. Okay, yeah, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Mm-mm. I mean, in this day and age, that's going to be kind of fucking hard. Yeah, because it's illegal? Well, I mean, to find a virgin. Oh, okay. 
Well, that's actually not a lie because everybody are fucking whores now. Hey, no slut shaming. Hey, it's okay. I literally was a whore not that long ago. What? Bro, it's been years. What, for you? For you? No, boo boo. We tried last weekend. What? Mm hmm. All right, we're going to have to have a conversation off. <laughs> he said, What? And you didn't tell me? <laughs> All right, anyway, enough about my sex life. Um, what the fuck were we talking about? <laughs> I think this is over. I no, this, there was more yeah, questions. No, I, I asked you a question and you were thinking. Oh yeah. Um, what the fuck? Um, I'm actually stalling right now. What the fuck was my question? Um, when it comes to oh, how would you devo- How would you like tell someone like how they could devote themselves? However you feel necessary. Some people might. He wants to get off this so bad to talk. <laughs> I oh, me no literally wait till the next solar eclipse go to wherever you can see it totality and then exactly say the lord's prayer three times backwards <laughs> <laughs> i'm so serious guys <laughs> you think i'm laughing because i mean you think i'm joking because i'm laughing but i'm not do it Anyway, no, seriously, if you guys are baptized, and you know what I mean, baptized. Anyway, so, with that being said, no, I will say, um, devotions, you know, I would, do you, do you think, like, um, do you think there's any entities, because, okay, now, here's a great question, because, you know, we both get asked this a lot, right, is how do I know if said entity wants me to be devoted to them, right? Do you think there's any entity out there that wouldn't want to be devoted to? Oh, that's a hard question. I'm sure it depends on a case by case scenario. Mm, that, yeah, no, yeah. So I mean, so but no. Overall answer would be like yes. Some some would say no. Yeah, some would mm-hmm. say no. Okay, so. So how do you think they would um? Get that answer. Um, I'm sure you would have like a feeling if like, like you're gonna die. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm sure you would have like a feeling in your gut that would tell you no. No, right? Or um, yeah. That was such a joke, guys. Please don't get your panties in the twist. What? Me joking about them feeling like they're going to die. Oh, yeah. I don't want to scare people. Like, I joke. Like, I have, like, my sense of humor is, like, mean and twisted. And, like, I don't want people to think I'm actually being serious. No. Um, But, yeah, no. I, like, yeah. That's to me. They would. Okay. This is the thing, right? And for some people, they're not going to understand what I mean. But. Other people are going to know exactly what I mean when I say you'll know when you like it, like when it happens, you'll know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when there's like a feeling or like just something in you, like, like something happens. Right. And then you get that like weird, strong sense in you. Like, again, like when they tell you, you will know, like, that's not something I think you ever have to worry about. Again, we have gotten that question many times as, you know, how do we know said entity wants to work with us? And again, it's like, you'll know. You can do, I've always suggested, oh my God, Hecate Shrine lit up right now in the living room is just beyond. Um, let me try this real quick. Um, yeah, so you can do like a little, maybe like um, like a ritual or like, you know, maybe like an offering or something with prayer and like you know um i know some people probably don't like that word prayer but it's we 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 all use it since like the dawn of civilization um you can do like a little prayer you know and to be like you know i you know like i mm, gojo um i don't know freaking i oh hi pro i forgot you were out there um you know 
I, John Doe, um, come to, you know, Lilith and all her greatness, and I offer to her the sacred apple and ask if we can commune and work together from this point on, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But basically, you know, do something like that. Offer something to the entity. Maybe literally ask them, like, hey, do you want to work together? You know, me working under, like, your influence and stuff. You know, if you don't want to devote yourself to anyone just yet. You know what I mean? And, again, you'll know, I did this with, before I started working with Santi Samar Morte, like, for real, for real, I did a little ritual to see, like, if she really even would work with me and i'll be honest with you i so didn't need to do this she's death for santi Morte not to accept you you would have to be immortal and mm. right you're not so hold on let me like this it's real quick so but i did it anyway you know because i was one of those people you know who was like you know do they want to work with me i don't know so let me ask um and she sent me a message. Then she sent me a sign. The very next day, she sent me a black snake with a like a little baby black snake with a white collar, like a like a little white stripe around his neck, slithering right up to my front door. And to some people, that's like okay, so. But to me, I don't know. It came with this energy, this essence. When I saw it, I was walking. So I was trying to walk. I was heading to the front door. And I see the snake in front of me slithering right up to the front door, not even scared or minding my own business. It looked like the snake was waiting for me to open the door to let it in. And it just, the energy like o- was overwhelming and came over me. And it just felt like it was like Santisma Morte being like, I'm coming in. We can work together. I like, you know, I accept you. Mm-hmm. So, I, so again, you know, like when so, like certain things will happen, but an energy that comes with it will be the thing to tell you like either a yes or b no you know what i mean maybe the next very day you know you ask you know somebody you know you ask an entity do you want to work with me and then the next day you fucking almost get into a car accident and then an energy comes over you like oh my god was that because i asked you know probably then and that's their way of saying no Uh, i wouldn't go that far but okay yeah i'm always going to the worst case scenario (laughs) Maybe you wake up the next day and all your fruit is rotten. Ah. There you go. That's nobody's getting harmed. Maybe you wake up the next day and your grandma's dead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, why did you take it there? I'm sitting with my dead abuela right now. It's obviously not true, abuela. Get his ass. All right. So that's my final take. Yeah. Would you like to add anything? Whatever you do, just do it with a pure heart. Period. Period. Because they will know. Oh, yeah. Oh, they'll know. All right. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, one more question. Mm-hmm. And this is a great question because I feel like your perspective and your opinion on it is great for the majority Mm-hmm. And I feel like this is information I want to give out to the people. What is a the diff- What is the difference between honoring and worship? And do you worship in your practice? Um, Again, to you, only to you. Not speaking for anybody else. To give honor, I would say, is more of like to acknowledge them. To give worship is to have a relationship with them right right yeah. i like what you i like what you said last how you were talking about like how like you know because you'll hear a lot of people say like you know we don't like pagans don't worship our gods we don't worship our deities but in a way i feel like we do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I feel like we like. I feel like that's what it. That's what devotion is. You know? No, you don't really like necessarily like break your fucking knees and like you know, cry and beg for forgiveness. Like you know, I don't know. Maybe that was a little too close to home, but like no, you don't. You know, you don't. I don't know how to put it. It's like, you know, I don't know. I feel like some people draw the line where it can be unhealthy. 
You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I feel like mm-hmm. nobody wants that. But worship, I feel like, is, how, like, again, like, honoring, devoting, you know, holding festivals, celebration, rituals for said entities. When we do our Hecate um, Depnon night, I feel like that is a form of worship, you know, it's mm-hmm. a form of devotion. It's a form of giving, offering, and praise. Mm-hmm. Personally, speaking, I'm sure a lot of pagans are probably going to get mad at me because I said that. And they'll be like, we do not worship. But again, like it is a very much, again, it's not, I'm not taking away that. No, we do work with our gods. You know, it is a relationship. It's a, team effort it's a duo pact we share like the same respect towards each other <clears throat> but again i don't know it is like you know again as long as it's healthy mm-hmm. you know what i mean as long yeah. as it's healthy. if you and then that's with anything you know you go over you overboard it and now it's becoming weird and unhealthy and now you're just again being Cold weird light. Exactly. Yeah, that is where like that's that's scary. Don't do that, please. That that like to anything or to anyone. You know what I mean? Because nobody gonna do it to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just saying. So why would you do that to anyone else? Period. That's where I draw the line. That's where I say no. That that we don't do. <laughs> no dice. But, yeah. Right. But okay, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time here. I know I did. Rowan. Yes. Did you have a wonderful time here? Yes. Good. Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. You guys have a wonderful day or night, whatever time it is. Have a beautiful Depnon and a beautiful dark night. I hope your witches I hope your witches are all tapping into the primordial powers tonight. And um yeah. Blessed be everybody. Blessed be. Okay, bye. Bye.